Good afternoon. As you know, consistent with our policy, we're releasing this video to the community. What we're about to show you is a compilation of 911 dispatch tapes, body cameras, and in-car video from our October 6 officer-involved shooting incident. After we show you the video, Chief Davis and Lieutenant Weeks will come out to answer any questions you may have. The Fairfax County Police Department responded to assist the Arlington County Police Department at 8.37 p.m. on October 6th. An Arlington County police officer shared emergency radio traffic of a wanted man who was shooting at their officers following an attempted traffic stop. Ricardo Singleton, 27, of Arlington, was wanted for felony speed to elude, brandishing a firearm at police, and hit and run for an incident that occurred earlier in the day in Arlington. Singleton was found later that evening in Arlington and again failed to stop. He fired multiple rounds at their officers. Singleton fled into Fairfax County and our officers became involved in the vehicle pursuit. Singleton struck multiple vehicles, rendering his vehicle disabled on Arlington Boulevard near Graham Road. Singleton got out of his vehicle and fired numerous rounds at FCPD officers. One FCPD officer discharged his firearm. Singleton was not struck. Fortunately, no community members or police officers were injured. The following is radio traffic between the Arlington County Police Department and the Fairfax County Police Department. Fairfax from Arlington with priority. Arlington PD, go ahead. Christopher, due to a vehicle that just shot at us, westbound 50, it's a felony vehicle subject with arms and dangerous. Westbound 50 passing North Park Drive. 4 Corner 4 Alpha, are you direct? 40 Alpha, direct. Any easy that starts to uh, Westbound Route 50, passing North Park? Subject to suicide. We have felony charges and also shots for fire. The following is body worn camera footage of the incident. He's going behind the best way. Get to the other side of the shopping center. Other side, other side. running down the alley behind the best way. He's coming around the other side of the best way. You just get ready, watch your crossfire.
that the crap is blowing. Oh, high speed chase. Look at that. Look. Oh my god, get down, get down. He's got a gun. Get down, he's got a gun. Shots fired, shots fired. Officers from Fairfax County, Arlington County, and Virginia State Troopers found Singleton hiding behind a nearby building. He was safely taken into custody. Fairfax County, 335 Alpha. We've got subjects. Shirtless, down the alley of Bestway. Challenging right now. Got him down here. Up behind you. Up behind you. You know, there's a fence. There's a fence behind him. We have blue on the other side. Keep walking slowly. Hands above your head. Hands above your head. Hands above your head. Keep walking slowly to us. We got it right here. We got it right here. We got it right here. Throw him out. Yeah, you got cuffs out? We have no I got it. You got me? I got cuffs out. I got cuffs out. Stop walking. Get down on the ground. Right there. Hey, one voice. One voice. Keep turning. Keep turning. One voice. Stop. Do not move until I tell you. Steve, go coach the boys. Stop. Move. Move. Why are we not moving on the ground? Here, we'll take a minute. Don't move. Do not move. Do not move. Do you understand that? Take the cover. I'm going to take you in the cover. Yes. It's him. It's him. Yeah, that's him. Got him. You, got him. you got that side? Just got him down there. Yeah. 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 Singleton was taken to the Adult Detention Center and served with Arlington County's initial warrants as well as additional charges of felony eluding use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, felony reckless discharge, and three counts of attempted malicious wounding on a law enforcement officer. Fairfax County detectives obtained charges for three counts of attempted malicious wounding on a law enforcement officer and the use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. He remains held without bond. Good afternoon. Um, do do this a little bit differently. Um, let me jump right to any questions. Drew. Um, I mean, you know, you had you were pretty emotional tonight. Up, you knew, you know, kind of 
the situation that the officers and the public were under with how many shots were fired when you watch that video back and kind of walk me through what you feel for the community and, and for your officers and Arlington yeah. officers and everybody. So I, I guess the sense of emotion was that this could have been a whole lot worse than than it was. And, and you all knew the night of and certainly by watching this body worn camera footage again, how, how crowded that intersection was and how very fortunate we are that no other motorists were harmed or worse and that no civilians who pedestrians were struck either at the gas station at a crosswalk. It's really, um, you know, miraculous is a strong word, but it's, we're really, really fortunate that other, other folks weren't harmed or, or worse. And, you know, I think as you watch the body worn camera footage, um, you, you, you see, that we had one motorist shout "God bless you" to to the cops as she was recording the shots being fired and and recording the police officers running after our gunmen, and then we had another civilian motorist who recorded the uh, events or part of the events on her cell phone and had the presence of mind to stay on the scene. And I think it's probably intuitive for people to want to get the heck out of there when something like that happens. But uh, she pulled over nearby. I'm not sure exactly where, but she stayed and shared that video with us, which was really, really helpful because every body worn camera provides uh, a different perspective and it's always not a complete perspective. But one thing that wasn't captured was our, our, our gunman tosses his, his firearm. And you, you saw the photograph of the, the Glock 17. And that's actually what we carry now. Uh, Fairfax County police, department transitioned from uh, one firearm to another. So we carry that very weapon, but but we certainly don't carry extended magazines with 30 rounds of ammunition in them. Um, so there were two additional 30 round magazines loaded inside his car and a picture of those magazines flashed up on, on the, uh, on this, on this video. Um, but yeah, he, this guy was armed with 90 plus rounds of ammunition. Um, it was a bad day for him. Um, and I was kind of taking notes, so for me, I didn't see it exactly. Did you know how many shots were fired from each party? And then the officer who was being, who, who, who discharged his firearm, it looked like when they kind of had him cornered there behind the store, I couldn't tell if there was another, sh one more shot fired there. I was taking notes. Yeah, so L Lieutenant Weeks will, is up here to correct me when I stray from the facts. So I believe it's five. Uh, rounds discharged by our gunman and five rounds discharged by the single Fairfax County police officer who who fired. Uh, there were no shots fired when when our gunman was surrendering behind the building. So uh, I don't know what you heard, but it wasn't a firearm yeah, discharge. Was the fence there, I it was a chain link uh, fence oh, okay. and our officers jumped the fence too. And I, I remember the night of seeing the, the palms of their, their hands were were uh, bloodied because our police officers were jumping the same chain link fence. But our, our gunman discarded that firearm right around that chain link fence area. So by the time he surrendered to us, he was unarmed. And the police officers, and, and, and I was reminded before I came out here that the police officers involved in this were were pretty young. And so for them to have that, that amount of grace under pressure, knowing that one of their colleagues was just fired on, uh, by a person, and then to see that person surrender, they really showed a lot of uh, poise, and they acted. Again, this sounds like a cliche, but they acted consistent with their with their training, and and they they afforded him verbal verbal commands. He complied, and they safely took him into into custody. And then his firearm was recovered. And, and to that point, um, you know, can you talk about the, the the decision that that's made in that moment where an officer has shots fired? And they're trying to decide whether or not they return fire, especially in an environment like that yeah. that's already so hot. Well, un unlike the bad guys, the good guys have to consider the, the totality of the environment. We have to consider civilians, pedestrians, motorists, businesses that are open. Uh, we have to consider a whole range of things. Um, they don't. We do. So when the police officer uh, returned fire, um, again, consistent with, with his training, all those things were being processed in, in, you know, microseconds, fractions of a, of a second. And, you know, we, we review each and every one of these officer-involved shootings because ultimately they end up as scenario-based training uh, for new police officers and incumbent police officers during in-service training. So this will undoubtedly be part of our um, basic training for our recruits and our police officers, you know, consider your environment, consider, consider your backdrop. And, and we did that.
And, you know, again, very hectic, volatile situation, and thankfully no one was hurt or killed. Is that officer who discharged their firearm still under uh, administrative review? He, he's on modified restricted duty right now. Uh, the investigation is still ongoing in so much as we ultimately have to uh, review the case with the uh, Commonwealth Attorney's Office, and that has not yet occurred. So that, that'll occur in, in the near future. But the, the quality of our internal investigations, both by major crimes uh, and by our Internal Affairs Bureau, uh, it, top notch. And, and, I, and I say that with a bit of perspective. I've, I've been in some other places and, and have seen uh, what this team here does uh, following a, a critical incident like an officer involved shooting. And it's, uh, it's world class. We take, take them very, very seriously. Uh, you know, we, we, we're just like the rest of the community. We certainly don't desire uh, these things to happen. But when, when they do happen, it's important for us to get it right. And I think we do get it right. And it's important for us to comply with a, a policy that's just over a year old in Fairfax County where we commit to the release of body-worn camera footage. And, and that's something we're proud of as well. So to be clear, did the officer fire the shot after seeing the gun or after in response to the shots fired? So uh, the the officer uh, perceived a, a deadly threat to to him and and to others. So when the officer returned fire, he returned fire because his 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 life was in jeopardy and the lives of uh, others nearby, motorists and pedestrians, uh, arguably were in jeopardy as well. So so I can't speak with uh, great specificity, um, much more beyond that. He, he perceived a deadly threat. And he deployed deadly force in response to that to that deadly threat. Can you talk about the, uh, the just the levels of communication with with the Arlington? You know, this incident uh, happened involving this person earlier. Was there ever a bolo put out? Was there ever some sort of uh, community message uh, that that went out? And if not, why? And also, is it, or do you all work regionally with surrounding counties to to try and? you know, bolster and improve communication yeah. as much as possible. Uh, every day, all day, and, and I've been a part of this law enforcement uh, community um, for, for over 30 years now. We communicate now more often and better than ever before. So the, the fact that this started in Arlington County when a couple of Arlington County deputy sheriffs made an observation of Ricardo Singleton holding a gun inside of his motor vehicle, that started at, at, at you know just 8.37 or so a.m. And then when he took off, hit a car and took off and, and fled in that, that vehicle, the Arlington, Arlington County Police Department was then involved. And they're the ones who obtained criminal arrest warrants for Ricardo uh, Singleton. And then a regional uh, communication took place with surrounding agencies, and uh, Arlington County Police Department uh, was searching for him throughout the day. So they were in communication with the jurisdiction where they suspected our gunman was, and that's where Prince George's County comes into play. So here we are with another agency, and Prince George's County picked up on the car, uh, observed the car, uh, eventually uh, that car made its way from Prince George's County back to Arlington County. Arlington County picks it up, uh, attempts to stop uh, uh, Singleton. Singleton flees. He shoots out the window at the Arlington County cops who are who are pursuing him. Virginia State Police get involved. Virginia State Police were actually in Fairfax County that day, helping us with a with an unrelated operation. So you know, multiple agencies, not uncommon in the national capital region, but I'll say the uh, the level of Communication cooperation is is strong. Our Office of Emergency Management put out a message to the community uh, warning of traffic congestion just nine minutes after this officer involved shooting. Um, I, I think I heard some, uh, and, and our Public Affairs Bureau was real time tweeting, if that's a thing. It is now. So they were real time tweeting um, in, in a really timely way uh, what, was, what was happening as well. So, um, you know, and again, we will review everything. And if we could do it better and faster, we will. We, we don't want to get it wrong, but we want to get it out there pretty quick. Amari. And the footage, um, one of the officers says that Singleton, that the subject is suicidal. How did officers come to that? So uh, we had that conversation again just today because uh, I heard that that audio on the body camera footage by the Arlington County police officer. So that that uh, radio transmission was made by an Arlington County police officer who probably, and, and I'm going to 
guess a little bit here, uh, was aware of the fact that Arlington County deputy sheriffs saw Singleton earlier in the day in a car by himself holding a gun up uh, and, and saying something to the effect of, I need help. So that's probably, th that message throughout the day and the night was probably transmitted from Arlington County Sheriff to Arlington County PD to surrounding jurisdictions. And that Arlington County uh, police officer included that in his radio transmission. I'm not sure that there's often a difference between someone who's suicidal and homicidal. Um, maybe this person was a little bit both. I, I don't know. But he's still held on no bond at the adult detention center. He's 27 years old. I'm not aware of... Uh, of, of of any significant or if any really if any criminal history, so uh, he he was obviously in some state of crisis that day. Chief, can yes, I ask sir. A question for an unrelated incident. We're just getting a report that could be a stabbing at Mount Vernon High School. We're told to inquire with Fairfax County Police. Do you have any? So we're we're on the scene of that stabbing at um, Mount Vernon High School right now. I do know that a, a 15 year old student was stabbed by another student uh, inside the high school, I believe, in, in a restroom. Um, the student who was stabbed, the victim, has non-life-threatening injuries, thank God. Um, we uh, know who the person responsible is for the stabbing. We know who the perpetrator is, and we're working uh, right now to to visit him and place him in custody. She gave us an update. He was just taken in custody, sir. Yeah, real time. That's like better than a tweet. <laughs> he's he's locked up. Thanks to you. And, I, and we'll, we'll get you more on that. But certainly if I'm a parent, a student, a teacher, a, a administrator, that, that certainly is something that is, uh, you know, that that's a worst case scenario. And thankfully, he's, he's still alive. And thankfully, we have the person in custody and we'll work to sort through any other issues to uh, to ensure that there's no retaliatory issues that we need to get in front of. Is there a fight, an argument, any you sent to what led up to this? I, I don't know right now, but when we know, uh, we'll certainly share that with with you and the community at large and, and our, our partners in the schools. Well, thank you all very much. Thanks, Gene.